Uh, our next speaker uh, from NYU, Javier Castellanos. Javier. Thank you. So I'm going to take you through some of the consequences of ADHD and the choices that are made. I'm going to skip all of the middle steps about how we got from some of these thoughts to focusing on the default network, which again is going to keep coming up, and uh, suggest that we're beginning the long path towards identifying some mechanisms um, that may, may help to clarify some of these issues for us. So to start with, this study started back in 1970 when a couple of hundred six to 12 year olds were recruited over the next seven years and they've been followed and they're now in their early 40s. And so 33 years after initial evaluation on average, these kids and the control sample that have been recruited from the same community were brought back in, evaluated by psychologists who knew nothing about their past uh, histories and we found, not surprisingly, but really in a, in a way that really validates the, the importance in terms of functional outcomes over the long term in ways that are very difficult to do otherwise, that in fact there are a number of negative outcomes uh, and the ones I'm focusing on here include decisions that are made uh, that involve taking risks when driving, in sexual encounters, um, etc. And one of the most striking was that there was a higher death rate even in a relatively modest sample even in their 40s. So I'll highlight some of these for you. Um, again, uh, visiting the emergency room more than three times was, uh, was sort of the cut point. Being at fault in more than two accidents or being in an accident where someone was injured, uh, having a head injury or again having a sexually transmitted disease were different in individuals or were reported as being different by these individuals um, in this uh, evaluation. Um, the motor vehicle histories are here and again it speaks to a chronic pattern of, of uh, sort of taking the easy way out or, or uh, being uh, impatient. Um, age at first sexual encounter was younger. Uh, having a very large number of sexual partners was higher, being less likely to use uh, contraception, etc. But again, the most dramatic was that uh, even at an average age of 41, we found 15 deaths among the probands, those uh, individuals with childhood uh, hyperactivity, and uh, even a fairly high sustain, uh, rate of deaths in the comparisons, uh, one of whom, for example, died in 9 11 at the Twin Towers. Um, when we break out whether the deaths were health related or not, there are no differences. What really differentiates the group is the 10 non health related deaths among the ADHD group versus one. These include three suicides, one overdose, two homicides, um, two work related deaths, uh, somebody who was hit by a car. And the last one was somebody who locked himself out of the house, decided to climb to the second floor to try and break in, fell and died. Um, again, sort of a, a tragic comic, uh, tragic uh, story. So again, this really documents that this is serious business and uh, obviously not for all. There's a range. Um, so it raises questions about what are the intervening mechanisms. And uh, the notion that uh, living in the moment is, is sort of a thing we, we value, but that you can overdo that <laughs> and uh, that there's a, a certain danger to that, a kind of obliviousness of consequences. And this has been operationalized in a number of ways. One of them is temporal discounting, the idea that uh, some individuals choose a smaller, sooner reward rather than waiting, uh, delaying the gratification for the larger, later one. And Mary Salanto, with whom we've been collaborating, has been treating adults with ADHD uh, who typically deny that they have problems until they come in at about age 40 and sort of hit the wall in a sense and then acknowledge this and start to, to work on it in a fairly um, constructive way. And cognitive behavior therapy um, will bring us back the light, <laughs> we hope. Uh, but uh, CBT has turned out to be uh, phenomenally effective, the, the kind of approach that she's been using with an effect size of five. It's a gigantic uh, treatment for these uh, motivated 
uh, individuals, but part of what's been really striking is how future blind they, they uh, seem to be. Uh, they know the consequences, but it doesn't seem to factor into their choices. So uh, this is always fun to speak without slides, but uh, uh, the, the point of this is that uh, we were talking at one of these meetings, and I had just, uh, I'm not sure for how many times, reread um, Andrews Hanna's uh, 2010 Neuron paper, which many of you probably know. And I have gone on record as saying that's one of my favorite papers because the, the multi-barreled approach that they took to the anatomic and uh, functional dissection of the default network. And in that paper, as I'll show you once we have the slides, um, and I hope that uh, this doesn't count uh, completely against my time, but we'll see. Uh, the, uh, and I can tell you part of the story, and I can tell you the whole story for that matter without slides, um, might make it even more compelling. Uh, the, um, they, they looked at the default network from a graph theory perspective and uh, used 11 regions of interest. Uh, in order to examine what are the, the key points, the hubs, and they identified the anteromedial prefrontal circuit and the posterior uh, cortex as key hubs and that those are the nodes that are related or synchronized with all of the other elements of the network, extracted those from the analysis and uh, conducted a hierarchical clustering analysis which gave them two subclusters and uh, those are designated on the basis of their anatomy as the dorsal medial uh, system and the medial temporal lobe system. So that was the, the hypothesis, in a sense, of that exploratory analysis. They then took that to a separate set of subjects and conducted an fMRI study in which they asked the participants to think about uh, situations that were either uh, uh, involving thinking about themselves or someone else in the present or in the future. And so once we go to slide view, <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, I was going to make another shout out to, to the ADHD 200 sample and the yeoman's work that Damien did in um, really incorporating the insights from Steve Peterson and others about the importance of dealing with movement and taking a sample of almost 800 individuals and then super cleaning and getting to 156 that were low motion and matched and using those to then identify the regions of greater statistical significance uh, between controls and various subtypes of ADHD. The first time in which the ADHD subtypes were shown to be neurobiologically distinct. So again, emphasizing the relevance of the default network, these large uh, red circles, especially in regard to combined type. Um, and here's the Andrews Hanna paper. I've already mentioned it uh, to you. Um, and uh, part of what they did, as I said, is uh, do an fMRI study and showed a beautiful dissociation between the activations that were related to oneself or someone else, and that was uh, activating for both the, uh, the cores, the AMPFC and PCC, uh, but when they were looking at uh, the dorsal medial prefrontal circuit, it was only activated when individuals were thinking about themselves in the present, not in the future, and not someone else. By contrast, the medial temporal lobe subsystem was only significantly activated when they were thinking about themselves in the future as opposed to the present and not someone else. As an aside, Randy Buckner uh, has been proposing for some time the, uh, the very reasonable notion that the medial temporal lobe is really designed for prospection, that we focus on it as a memory system because it's easy to study memory. We know what happened yesterday so we can ask about it and validate it. But the brain doesn't care about what happened yesterday except as it helps us to predict what's going to happen tomorrow. And so that really the task of the brain is predicting the future and helping us to make advantageous decisions with regard to that. And so it's the future orientation of the system that, that is probably the most relevant and important from an adaptive perspective. Um, so we, we've done this in a by the book as close as we can um, 
following the recipe that, that Jessica laid out in that paper, uh, we didn't have coverage with our scanning sequence for all of their seeds. Uh, we, we lost uh, ventromedial and uh, um, uh, the, the uh, temporal pole, for example, but we took the, the seeds we had, good coverage, and uh, basically, again, I'm not gonna uh, walk you through all of this because time is, is short, but, uh, and Brad's giving me a couple minutes, uh, but uh, we've looked at this in a couple of sets of data. One is adults with ADHD, um, and we started with them because, again, Mary Slanto has been focusing on adults with ADHD in her treatment studies, and uh, frankly, this was uh, data to, to support uh, a grant that um, we were just submitting. Um, and uh, so these were well matched, uh, 61 and 75. Uh, matched in age, uh, uh, even uh, sex ratios, um, number of parameters. There was a slight difference in terms of uh, performance IQ, but it was here the, the adults with ADHD were slightly higher than the controls. Again, I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that. Um, and uh, we've done this a couple of different ways, but I'm only going to show you one of them because, again, they give us basically the same results, but this is the one we started with, which was, well, first of all, we, we looked at the correlations between the hubs and either the medial temporal lobe or the, the uh, dorsal medial subsystem with the naive assumption um, that the medial temporal lobe system would be broken or deficient in some ways, that there was a problem with future, the future-oriented system. Uh, we didn't see any difference there, but there was a hint of a difference in the dorsal medial. So I suggested to Chrissy Cox that we look at the ratio of those two and we've since looked at the difference because that's statistically a better behaved measure. And uh, in fact, that's, that's what we've uh, seen that intrigues us. Um, the covariates include uh, mean uh, frame-wise displacement and, and all the usuals. Um, and uh, so here's the, the results um, of work that's still in progress. Um, when we look at everyone, uh, adults with ADHD, uh, there is a uh, stronger relationship in the correlations in the dorsal medial system relative to the medial temporal lobe system. The now correlations are stronger than the future correlations um, relative to the controls. Here are all the covariates, which I won't take you through. Uh, when we limit this to the inattentive type of ADHD, uh, it's no longer significant. And when we limit it to the combined type, it becomes a slightly more striking um, differentiating factor. So we don't have in our hands a replication sample of adults, although uh, I'm sure you do, and uh, colleagues in um, Porto Alegre in Brazil are gonna be looking at this soon because I just presented this last week and, and they've got the data and so uh, if we're not careful, they'll beat us to the paper. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll know soon because they're literally gonna look at it, uh, they may be doing it already. Um, it's where Tassiana um, Costa Diaz uh, works as well and, and uh, they have a very good group down there led by Luis Rode. And um, at any rate, We've looked at this in kids, uh, 7 to 18, and have a somewhat larger sample of those, 136 versus 111 controls. Um, pretty much took uh, all comers that met our, our movement uh, criteria, so there's some differences um, in the uh, samples in these demographic parameters, because basically, unless you're completely matched when you have these kinds of samples, things are gonna be statistically different. But we co-vary for all of them. Um, and, uh, of course, movement in this case is slightly different, significantly different. Um, large samples, but uh, the mean frame was, was 0.11 versus 0.09. Um, and so, besides uh, um, deleting or not analyzing individuals with uh, mean values greater than 0.2, we also include that as a covariate. Um, and uh, same kind of thing. And once again, in the combined sample, see that there is a stronger relationship um, of the dorsal medial now oriented system to the future medial temporal lobe, that this is uh, non-significant in the inattentive type and uh, somewhat stronger in the combined type. So 
I was hoping, to be frank, that uh, this would be a really strong effect. As you heard, Mike, we need to get effect sizes of three to, to have uh, the kinds of things that are really going to make it to the clinic. Um, and just working it out uh, very crudely, it works out to a Cohen's D of about 0.4. So we've got a ways to go. Um, but uh, on the other hand, um, unlike some of the things that all of us do, which is to root around and explore uh, with lots of energy, we very much uh, took the, the previous paper and honed in on two very precise uh, regions and sets of relationships. And um, I think that, that gives me more confidence that there may really be something there. Um, it also gives us an insight into the phenomenon of uh, making choices about uh, something now versus the future. And it suggests, um, perhaps metaphorically, that there is a, a real urgency or vividness to the now um, in individuals with uh, this kind of diagnosis or this kind of proclivity that overwhelms their sense of, they know what the consequences are, you can ask them and they'll tell you, but it's now and that's really important. Uh, biologically, it just feels more intense. And so it fits with that sense. And uh, so it gives us uh, some thoughts about how we can pursue this. Turns out that the neuroeconomists have been focusing on this because as a nation, we're not saving enough for retirement. And so they focus on having people think more about the future. And there are ways in which you can enhance future orientation. And uh, Mary Salanto is working on putting those into her, her therapy, for example. And we think that this would be a cool way to try and track uh, the improvements in that over time. So uh, let me stop with that and uh, mention Chrissy Cox, who's been working on uh, these analyses. You met Mike, and you met Adriana, and Claire is not here, but she wishes she were. And she sends her best, and thank you very much. <laughs>